By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the finals of the Dwarven Warriors Cup in Forthausen, the Netherlands. If you've missed the other matches, please don't continue watching this one. Click on the playlist that's appearing right now and enjoy all the other Alpha Beta Madness because this, this is the finals. And in the finals, we are going to see Ron sitting on the left playing a mono black, black border deck, of course, only Alpha Beta cards in this tournament, playing against Diam, also from the Netherlands, and he's also playing with mono black. So we will see a lot of similarities between these decks, and therefore my deck deck section will be very, very short. I, I guess I should say very brief. Um, both of these players are playing with your usual suspects, so that means we're going to see Dark Rituals possibly into Hypnotic Spectres, but there are more options, there are more flavors to choose from. Both of these players are playing with Royal Assassin, so maybe we'll see that after a Dark Ritual. And what do you think about the Frozen Shade that Ron is playing? I don't believe that Dion is playing Frozen Shade, but I do believe Ron is playing Frozen Shade. I'm not 100% sure though, so maybe we are going to see a Frozen Shade on both sides of the table. And remember that one match that we showed with Ron in it, um, he also played a Nettling Imp, so he managed to get a Nettling Imp and a Royal Assassin on the table. So that is really a beautiful combo. So I wonder if we are going to see that again. I believe both of these players are packing Mind Twist, so it could get really, really brutal. Both of these players are playing raised Dats, so it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes. One of the differences that I've noticed between these two decks is that Dion is packing a lot of Nightmare. So Nightmare, beautiful creature, beautiful to see, especially black bordered. So I'm really looking forward to see a Nightmare coming from the side of Dion. And of course, um, we have this whole Terror situation to talk about, because is Terror really still useful in this matchup? I actually believe it's not, because it cannot destroy a creature that's black and you're playing against a mono black deck. So both of these players, I'm not sure how many uh, terrors they are playing main but they will definitely board it out after game number two so this is it for the deck tech oh before i forget i have to mention the artifact again and with the artifact of course i'm talking about icy manipulator i believe in a linear field like alpha beta a flexible card like icy manipulator that could bring the difference and maybe because both players are packing them maybe whoever draws the icy first will get the victory first and of course icy royal assassin is a beautiful classic combo that is always great to see on the board so i just wanted to mention that keep that in the back of your mind icy can play a very important role in this matchup okay without further ado let's go to game number one mono black versus mono black Game number one about to start here in Fort House. As we can see, it looks like Dion is taking a mulligan here. A little glitch on the line and there's a good start from Ron here playing a basic swamp. And I believe that's also a basic swamp by Dion. It's a little bit hard to see. Second swamp in the game here by Ron playing a black knight. And that means immediate pressure here by Ron on the life total of Dion. Dion also playing a Black Knight. Well, this is what you can expect in these mirror matches. It's nice here to note that it's actually the first time that Ron is taking part in this tournament and he's already find, uh, finds himself in the finals. So that's already a great achievement here by Ron. And I believe Dion has been in the finals before. There we see a Paralyze. That means the Black Knight gets stabbed and Ron can swing in for two here. Dion is going to take two, going down to 18. And let's see, going to land number three. Can he find a Hypnotic Spectre? Just passing turn here. And we're probably going to see another attack here. That means Dion is going to drop to 16. And Ron tapping here. Will we see a Hippie? And there's a Frozen Shade. We talked about the Frozen Shade in the introduction in the deck tag section. Frozen Shade, oh, one creature, and for one mana, you can give it plus one, plus one. So that actually is a lot of damage on the board now. And there we see, I believe it's an Icy Manipulator. And it's a great card, of course, but Dion doesn't have the land to activate it at the moment. So that means that Ron can potentially swing in here for six, and Dion would drop to ten. 
And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. Six damage for the Ion, dropping to 10 life. And this first game is kind of slipping out of the hands of the Ion here. He needs something big. Maybe land number five, play a Sengir, that would help. Of course, he can now activate his Icy. And he's looking at his hand. Is he going to untap the Black Knight? Yes or no? He is deciding to untap, but of course it's a blocker. Remember, Frozen Shade does not have flying, even though it looks like he has flying. And there's that land that Dion needed so much. Probably just going to pass here and waiting for Ron to declare combat. And in response, probably going to tap the Frozen Shade and going to trade for the Black Knight. That's probably what's going to happen here. Let's see. Ron just took his card for the turn. Weighing his options. I mean, he's also playing with Icy Manipulator, so maybe he's found one too. But remember, the Frozen Shade is an 0-1 creature by itself. You need to pump black mana into that thing, into that shade, to actually give it power. There's another Swamp here for Ron, so that means it's a potential 5-6. And both players struggle to get rid of artifacts because they're on mono black. So once you have an artifact in play, it's probably going to stay there. Making the Icy Manipulators even more decisive in this final game here. I should say the final match. First game of the finals at the Dwarven Warriors Cup. Looks like Ron is really in the tank here. Trying to find a way to keep pressure on Dion here. And he's actually he wants to go in combat. So in response, Dion taps the Frozen Shade. And I don't think there's much uh, much here that Ron can do. He's really in the tank, looking at his hand again. And he's passing turn here, deciding not to attack, doesn't want to trade. And that makes sense because Dion has a Black Knight with the Paralyze on it. And I mean, if you trade, you kind of traded a normal Black Knight for a Black Knight with a Handicap. So from that side, I can understand. Of course, it all depends on what you have in hand. I mean, if you have more ground creatures in hand to put pressure, maybe you want to trade. And I guess he didn't pass turn. He's still in the tank here. And finally decides to attack. I guess Dion's going to trade. That's exactly what's going to happen here. And that means uh, Paralyze goes to the bin of Ron. And is he going to play a new one? I believe this is another Frozen Shade here on the side of Ron. So two Frozen Shades. It's... That's not, I mean, it's nice because of the Icy, actually. So it's, it's, I wanted to say that's not ideal because you can only pump the Frozen Shade, you know. Oh, another Icy Manipulator here for Dion. This is pretty brutal. And that means that those two Frozen Shades are pretty much locked up. On the other hand, uh, Dion is also not applying any pressure. And his life total is cut in half. So let's see what Ron can do here. Can he find... Another way to pressure the board here. We first see Dion tapping down the two Frozen Shades uh, pre-combat. And then second main, we see, oh, another Icy. So this is really an Icy Manipulator battle. You would think it's Mono Black against Mono Black. But yes, that is true. But underneath that, there's a layer of Icy Manipulatorness happening here. So it's really an Icy match. Definitely this first game. And I wonder if... if, if both players have anything in their sideboards to deal with the IC Manipulator? I don't think so. And as it stands, Dion will definitely need something else on the board here to take care of the Frozen Shade. And tapping another four. Will we see another IC Manipulator? Whoa! <laughs> this is ridiculous! IC number three. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but I, I play with Icy quite often. And, um, ooh, I like this play. He's stepping down a land instead of an Icy. And that is a very good play here from Ron because that means Dion only has one land left to tap anything down with the Icy's, meaning he's got one Frozen Shade left for the swing. So this is a really good move here from Ron. Potentially, he can now deal... Five damage, probably want to keep one land open for his own IC, so probably going to deal four damage here. No, he's not going to deal the full five. Dion's going to drop here to five 
life. And remember, both of these players play with drain lives as well. So that's also a nice finisher. What I wanted to say about the ICs is it's great to play with one. It's not. It's it's horrible to play against one. And it's I find it even more. You know, uh, I find it worse if I have to. Uh, if I'm stuck in a game where we both have an IC or multiple ICs on the field, it's just so incredibly tiring. It just turns into a game of chess really quickly. And in this case, you would think Dion is uh, on the upper hand here with three IC manipulators, but he only has five life. He is under pressure. And it looks like we saw a sinkhole here on one of the swamps. And that is actually quite relevant uh, because of the two frozen shade shades and the IC manipulator on the side of Ron. So Dion, Dion is kind of, you know, doing a really good job in staying alive, but he's not really putting any pressure on Ron's life total. And it looks like Ron's untapping everything here. Taking a card for turn, facing those three icy manipulators and four untapped mana on the side of Dion. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much expecting Dion to also tap down the icy manipulator and step. First tapping down the two frozen shades. And tapping one, finding a dark ritual. Will we see? Oh, a drain life. Yeah, drain life for five, right? No, it's a drain life for four, actually. Or is it a drain life for five? It seems to be a drain life for five here. So that means that Ron has won this match against Dion. Or not match. I keep saying match. The first game here against Dion. So game number one goes to Ron. Let's give these players some time to sideboard and we'll catch up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to start and we have Ron winning that game one with that drain life. And that means that Dion gets to start. This time he didn't take a mulligan and both players here playing a basic swamp. And I think that's already a much better start, of course, for Dion instead of taking a mulligan, having to go down to six. He just could start with a full grip, and this time he can play a turn two Black Knight. Will we see a Paralyze from Ron, just like we, we did in game number one? Let's see, tapping a Swamp. Oh, it's a Dark Ritual, and there is a Barkraft. Oh, this is a great inclusion from the sideboard. Barkraft, 3-3 three, three Swamp Walker. This is trouble for Dion. What can he do here? This is an unblockable creature. Wow, coming in from the sideboard of Ron, but there is the Paralyze, tapping down the Buckraft, and two damage coming in from Dion with his Black Knight, and there we also see a Demonic Tutor, I believe, because he's getting his deck here to look for a card. Wow, what is he going to tutor for? I fear, I am afraid he's going to tutor for a Mind Twist, because that's basically what you do. Um, you know, I hope not, it's still not my favorite card, but it's probably the best thing to do from a game perspective here. And there we see Ron here playing a Frozen Shade turn three. Unable, of course, to untap the Bokraft, but next turn, if he can find the land, then the turn after he can start uh, untapping his Bokraft. Now let's see, there's a casting. Ooh, and there's the Mind Twist that I talked about. So that's the Mind Twist that Dion probably found. That means Ron only gets to keep one card. Beautiful Netling and going to the bin and two Drain Lives. The two Drain Lives, not all too useful at this stage in the game but definitely late game they can be so decisive we saw that in game number one and there's actually uh not a bad turn from ron here playing a hypnotic specter not finding a land though so that means the bockraft still remains tapped but i'm sure dion wants to do something against that hypnotic specter let's see there's another hypnotic specter and he's going to swing in here with the Black Knight. 2 2 first striker dealing more damage. So that means Ron's going to drop here to 14. And let's see. If he attacks with the Hypnotic, I'm expecting Dion just to block this, just to make the trade here. Interesting. Also attacking with the Frozen Shade. The Frozen Shade, he can now deal 4 damage with the Frozen Shade because he's got 4 swamps. Let's see what he's going to do here. He's actually not going to pump the Frozen Shade. Instead, play a second Bokrath. I'm really liking these Bokrafts coming in from the sideboard of Ron. It's a beautiful creature and uh, a very cool, cool choice here from Ron. And I wonder if Dion also boarded them in. If they're actually in his sideboard, I don't think so. And besides being a great attacker, the 3-3 is now also stopping the Black Knight from Dion. 
So, ooh, Royal Assassin. Royal Assassin on the board. Another problem. And the lights are being turned on because of all the darkness that we see around us here. And there's the untap from Ron for the Bockraft passing turn. The problem, of course, now is the Royal Assassin. It's kind of like a brick wall. And um, Ron knows if I attack, I'm going to lose a creature here. So I'm not going to attack. And there is a JM Day Tome. So actually, for D on the standstill is not too bad. He can just draw extra cards. And he's already ahead of cards after that Mind Twist. And look at that. There we see an Icy Manipulator. Actually... Actually, strangely enough, at the current board state, it's not that useful because, I mean, Ron is now tapping down the Royal and then you may think, oh, he can attack now with his Bokras. But if he does, next turn, Dion can untap the Royal and kill any tapped creature. So in the end, it's not really really getting Ron anywhere. I think the best way to use the IC in this in this stage of the game is just end step, tapping, tapping the GM Day Tome or tapping a land. And end step, I mean the end step of Dion. I see, of course, an extremely strong card, but in this current situation, not as useful. Tapping down five here, we see a drain life on the Bokraft. That means three more life for Dion. And interesting here, maybe I would have kept a drain life in hand. On the other hand, you know, Ron is also playing with a mind twist. So just to keep a full hand and then give it away to a mind twist, that seems pretty useless. And there is another Icy Manipulator. And that means they, you know, they, they do get more annoying. The more icy you have, the more annoying they, they, they become. Ooh, an icy on the side of Dion. And that's, that's uber annoying, I could say, because of that royal assassin. And in response, Ron says, in response to you casting the icy, I'm going to tap down your royal assassin. Of course, that's a good move here by Ron. And I'm, I'm curious to see how these players are going to navigate the next couple of turns because I could see Dion using his IC to slowly kill the creatures of Ron. I mean, that's the kind of a no-brainer. Ron wants to attack right now, by the way. He wants to go into combat. In response, Dion is going to tap down his frozen shade. Ron's going to deal three damage. Makes sense here because of the IC that Dion has. He can tap down the creatures anyway. He might as well attack and get some damage in. And that means that uh, Dion can use the Royal now and first take, takes care of the Frozen Shade. Not really sure how you slit a throat of a Frozen Shade. But Dion just did it with his Royal Assassin. And, you know, things are not looking great here for, for Ron. Of course, he's got the two Icy, so that means, you know, he can tap down the Black Knight. And if Dion puts another threat on the board, he can tap that down. But I think the big problem here eventually is the jam day tome and of course the icy manipulator royal combo that dion has on the table that means that basically any creature that ron plays is going to be instantly killed and he can he also has card advantage with that book so he will probably find enough threats to kind of work his way through the double icy manipulator here on the board and again he wants to tap down the book forcing dion to make an early choice how to use his mana and he's using it to draw another card. Probably gonna gonna kill, exactly gonna kill the last creature here of Ron. Wants to go into com into attack phase, into combat, but the Black Knight gets tapped by Ron. All of this makes makes a lot of sense here by both players. There is a quick sinkhole. Sinkhole, you know, it can still be useful, even though it's uh it's uh you're playing against a mono deck. You know, I mean, Paralyze gets stronger. You need a lot of lands to activate all the IC. So the Jam Day Tomes. So Sinkle can actually still be relevant. And there is another IC, by the way, from Ron here. And um, yeah, I wonder if it's really going to help him much. He's probably going to tap down both of his creatures. And six mana. Are we going to see a Nightmare? Oh, Nightmare hitting the board. Sweet. Look at that. Beautiful. You don't see a lot of nightmares anymore. Beautiful to see a wild nightmare in a finals of an old school tournament. And of course, it's here at the Dwarven Warriors Cup in Vorthuizen. And uh, this is going to be cool here. The nightmare actually is an 8-8, but it's, I mean, it's going to be tapped down, unfortunately. That means one damage at least dealt by the Royal Assassin. 
It's kind of sneaking his way through to deal damage. There's another Nightmare on the board here. Beautiful. This is fantastic here. At least, at least for Dion, not for Ron, but... Yeah, going through his graveyard now. I wonder, I wonder what he's what he's looking at in his graveyard. Maybe he has a raised dead. But there's not much that uh, that can help him here. The problem actually is there's no artifact removal, and it's really difficult to get rid of the royal. I think I think step one for Ron is here first to get rid of the royal assassin. And then he actually has, ooh, look at this, even more gas coming from Dion here, more, more beef on the battleground. And Ron says, you know what, this is enough, I've seen enough here, I cannot win this second game. That means that uh, we're going to get a game number three, looking forward to that, and maybe we'll see more Nightmares and more Buckrafts in game number three. Game number three, it is 1-1, one, one. and I think... You know, a final this tournament it deserves, it deserves a um, a third a third game. You know, and uh, ooh, is Dion taking another mulligan again? I hope not. I mean, in the finals you just want to have a fair fight. Then again, I'm sure I'm sure when you're in the finals and your opponent is taking a mulligan, you're like, okay, okay, I can uh, I can handle that. Let's 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 see if it's the case. Actually, let's first see if it's the case. It looks like Ron's not reshuffling his deck, so... Yeah, yeah, there's a mulligan here by Dion. So he's going to six, but at least he's on the draw, so drawing card number seven here. Interesting to see that both players in all three of these games haven't had an opening with Dark Ritual. And there's a Black Knight on the side of, uh, of Ron. We see, uh, we've seen a lot of Black Knights. There's actually a single pretty nice timing here in turn number two. Does mean two damage here for Dion, going down to 18... And Ron not following up with another threat, just passing turn here, giving Dion some time maybe. But he's not playing anything out either. Interesting start here. Ooh, and there's not another land by Ron being stuck here on two lands. Let's see, what can Dion do with four lands? Is he going to play another Jam Day Tome or Icy? There's not really a creature that comes to mind on the side of Dion that costs four to cast. I mean, there are enough three drops and two drops and five drops. Even six drops with a nightmare. Ooh, a mind twist. Brutal. Especially against Ron, who's already, you know, low on lands, so his hand is pretty full. Hypnotic Spectre, Bokrath, and a mind twist, his own mind twist. I guess that's the best weapon against the mind twist. <laughs> mind twisting the mind twist. Wow, what a great, a great couple of hits here from Dion. And I mean, if Ron only would have had. Okay, he's got a Demonic Tutor, that helps. I wanted to say, if only he could have found land drop number three, he could have deployed at least his Hypnotic Spectre. And look at that, he's actually looking up a basic Swamp here. So, but despite the fact that it's not looking great for Ron, he is the only one who has a creature on the board, and that creature, the Black Knight, has already dealt six damage to Dion. And, I mean, you know, Dion has to start answering this Black Knight right now. Tapping four more, casting a JM Day Tome. I mean, he already's got card advantage. And there's a Hypnotic Spectre. So actually, Ron's doing a pretty good job here, keeping pressure on Dion. Dion's dropping to 12 next turn, possibly blocking, dropping to eight. But there we see a Drain Life. And the Drain Life is actually giving Dion another turn back to 14 and taking care of the Hypnotic Spectre. So that's one good Drain Life. Look at this and a Juggernaut. That is pretty cool. And a big problem here for Dion, because that is five extra damage. That means he could drop to five next turn. Seven damage, including the Black Knight. He needs to do something here. Casting a Sengir Vampire. Probably going to block the Juggernaut with the Sengir. And that must be an interesting battle. That's exactly what's going to happen here. So the Sengir is going to die. And there's Sengir on the side of Ron. Ron is finding really good creatures, despite the fact... That he's got way, way less cards than Dion. So Dion on 12 here. Remember, Ron is still on 20. He's got a Black Knight and has a Sengir Vampire on the board. I mean, Dion has some time. 12 is still a pretty good life total. There we see another Drain Life. So he's going to go up to 14. 
And gonna go to 10 now, and there's a Royal Assassin from the side of Ron. And I must say, Ron is drawing pretty decent. There's a Soul Ring here. Maybe Dion's gonna use it to dick with his book. No. Oh, there's a Nightmare. Beautiful. 5-5 five, five Flyer. And that's big enough to deal with the same gear. And, and, I mean, what Ron needs right now is an Icy Manipulator. Tapping down a Nightmare, killing it with the Royal, attacking with the same gear. That is, that is the, the, the play that he's looking for. That's the top deck that he wants to pick. Let's see. Dion working out his board here, playing a Hypnotic Spectre. And, of course, keeping four land open as well with that Soul Ring. To, uh, four mana, I should say, to use the GM Day Tome here. That's exactly what's going to happen here on end step. And I mean, again, it's kind of bad news because it's a standstill situation. But again, Dion has a book and we saw that in game number two as well. And that usually means that the player with the book will eventually win the game. Let's see if that's going to happen now as well. There is a Demonic Tutor. It's got one colorless floating still. And is he going to look for a Drain Life to take care of the Royal? Or is he going to find a Royal of his own? Let's see what he's going to do here. Tapping down. And yeah, there's the Drain Life. So draining for once is going to go to 11 here. And then swinging in with the Nightmare. That's exactly what's going to happen. Remember, the Nightmare is a 6-6, six, six, so that's like ridiculously big. Playing a second Hypnotic Spectre. Curious to see if he's willing to double block. Actually, he would just take the damage and then attack back, of course, with two Hippies. So Ron is not going to attack. Needs that Hypnotic Spectre on defense duty. And that's not great because there's a 6-6 six, six Nightmare heading Ron's way here. Attacking here with all that he has. Probably going to block one of the... Uh, one of the Hypnotic Spectres. That means he's going to take 8 damage. Dropping to 6 here. Are we going to see another Nightmare? And this is pretty cool. Senior Vampire getting a counter in the finals. That is pretty sweet. So it's turning into a 5-5. Five -five. I really like that. But I'm afraid that next turn is going to be over for Ron. Instead, yeah, no. There is a basic swamp. I wanted to say, um, unless he can find an Icy... Or, I don't know, something else, Drain Life, whatever. But it, it's not happening. Congratulations, Dion, for being the Dwarven Warriors Cup champion! And that was it. That was another finals in the books from the Dwarven Warriors Cup 2020 was the edition. I would like to thank Ervin for organizing this whole tournament, man. It is fantastic. It was the first time for me being part of this event. What a blast. And the problem is now I want to have a black border deck. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I can start by borrowing one or borrowing a couple of cards and, uh, and joining you for this tournament next year. Anyway, it was a great tournament. I think uh, it, it had a beautiful final with three games. I mean, that's, that's what you want to see in a final. And uh, beautiful cards. I mean, the nightmares left, right and center. Frozen Shades. How incredibly cool is that seeing that in old school Magic the Gathering final? And uh, yeah, thank you very much for organizing this. And thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can do so very simply. Leaving a like, leaving a comment, sharing this content, all that really helps. And also become a subscriber if you're not subscribed yet. So thank you for doing all that. And you can now also become a sponsor of Timmy Talks, a sponsor of the show. And you can do this in multiple ways. You can become a channel member, but you can also join us on Patreon. There's a link popping up right now, and you can join the Timmy crew on Patreon. And uh, talking about it, um, let's take a look at the end scroll, and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing patrons of Timmy Talks that are making all of this possible. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the
Ik het als vinkertjes zomaar gezien.